In the event of the shooting of Michael Brown, I felt flashbacks in my own life as African-American. I know I'm definitely haunted when Obama said I, he could have been Trayvon in regards to Trayvon's case two years ago. Um, I feel like I easily could have been him too, and it's definitely happened to me in my own driveway. So I think for many African-American males in particular, we've had flashbacks of our own mortality. Reminding yourself of your own mortality is a very scary thing. It either causes you to act or causes you to hide. I mean, it makes you feel like you can't go anywhere. You don't, you don't want to trust the police. You don't want to trust any authority figure because they're, 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 they abuse their power. So, so you feel like, why should we uh, obey the law? And they don't obey the law. And, and then if they do break the law, they get away with it. And these are, supposed to, these are supposed to be the people who enforce it. I think it's just wrong because he got killed that way. And like the police think they have so much power and they get off with what they do no matter if they kill anybody. I, I'm ashamed to say that when I heard about the Michael Brown shooting, I wasn't surprised in a sense. Because it, you, you hear about it so often where it, even if it's black on black crime or if it's a white officer shooting an unarmed black male, it, it, it happens so much that it's not something that I'm going to jump in and like, oh, let, let me do something about it. it. It's a part of everyday life and it shouldn't be. Be. I feel like it was wrong. The police officer was wrong to kill him for no reason. With his hands up, but I mean, we do see crimes like this every day, and it's gonna take a lot to stop police brutality. So it angered me that this is something that goes on, and for our children and for our community, this is normal. Um, so it's not a shocker to a lot of people. Oh, it's just something else that another, you know, African American. Um, young man that's that's been killed and taken out of the system so it, it really pains me that we have those reactions and those feelings that this is normal because this should not be anything that's normal and this should not be anything that we just let pass. Coming out of the Mike Brown situation I think that people need to organize. I think that's the only solution is local you know what I'm saying, organization. And, 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 and take that energy, you know what I'm saying, that we give to church every Sunday, you know, and uh, start to put it towards, you know, uh, actually making the community a better place. So the worst uh, cliche that came out of all this, all of all the media coverage around Ferguson has been that there's, there needs to be a national conversation about race. And I think the reason that bothered me was because I didn't feel like any of the people who were saying that actually intended to do it. I think it's very, very uncomfortable and scary for many people to talk about race in this culture. And until we address the issue of race, nothing is, to me is going to really get solved. My experience with Freedom School so far has uh, been pretty great. Josh called me last night asking if I was coming and I told him I was excited to come because I, I do want to know how is racism affecting our community and property too. I mean it's, it's, it's institutional, it's not, it's not something that we put ourselves in, it's something that was designed. I mean, I'm going to come out and say it's pretty rare, a pretty rare experience for me to be a minority in a group of people. Um, and I think that's something that it's probably, I think that's part of why it's valuable for me. But at the same time, there can be a sense of kind of alienation. So I, I kind of welcome that, but I'm aware that that might be something I'm going to need to just kind of push through. Change in the world has to start with the individual before moving out into the community. So I'm thankful that Freedom School does challenge that. I think it's important because a lot of things is happening, like racism and like poverty and stuff like we've been talking about. And it's important to know why it's happening, how can we overcome it. And it's important for uh, young blacks to get together and talk about it in group instead of being separated. In. It's teaching us the history of the system because we're taking American government, but it doesn't teach us what the system is doing to us. It's teaching us what the, the politician's jobs is to do. So I feel like it's especially important now to kind of sit down with people and I think it's been great to hear other people's perspective about what it's like to live in a city that I know that I experience differently than they do. 
it's just taking my thinking to just a whole other level of like why we see so many problems in our communities. Once you know what's going on, you know, you, you start to, you just, you, your perspective changes and you start to do, you know what I'm saying, you start to act different, you start to do different things. You know, you just, you just don't look at the world the same. So even if that's the only outcome, you know what I'm saying, that folks get educated, that's, that's fine with me. I'm happy with that, you know what I'm saying, that folks actually know why and how, you know what I'm saying, poor people of color are oppressed, you know. Not just that it's happening, but how it's happening and why it's happening, you know.